Hello. <laughs> I don't know what that was. All right, welcome to the first class of this series. Uh, I decided to call them classes because lesson is way overused. Someone beat me to that. And to be honest, it sounds boring. I wouldn't use lesson. And video, it's like everything is a video. So I had to stand out, okay? All right, enough of that. Now that you know what this project is about and what technology that we're gonna use and why we're gonna use it, let's actually start to set up our development environment. Uh, just to make sure, to be on the safe side, make sure you have Node installed and NPM. I'm pretty sure you have it. If you don't, go to nodejs.org and download the latest stable version or the current one. Uh, to make sure that you have it, open up a terminal window and do node-v and I have it, I have 10, 15, 3, whatever, and do npm-v to make sure that you have npm installed. All right, other than Node, uh, we're gonna use MongoDB Atlas, which is a cool service by MongoDB, which lets us create uh, one free cluster. Uh, just because it's one, it doesn't mean we're limited. We can have as many databases and collections within that one cluster. So yeah, we're gonna use this. So go to mongodb.com and let's go to try free sign up for an account if you don't have one i'll sign up for one here as well so put my email my name misspelled my own name <laughs> put a password and that's okay we need to agree guys <laughs> all right let's create an account all right it asks us to set up a couple of things I'll say I'm learning MongoDB. I'll select AWS and select the uh, the one that's nearest to you. I'll select, okay, I don't have free tier in London, so I'll select the Ireland one. If you're in America, you're probably gonna select North Virginia or, or, or Origin, Oregon, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Sorry, Americans, I don't know what that reads like. All right, so make sure that you select stuff that's just the free tier. You can sign up, of course, for a paid account. It's based on, uh, it's hosted with AWS, so the performance will be great. So cluster name, I'm just gonna give it cluster zero, that's fine. I'll just say create cluster. And there we go, my cluster has been, or is being created. Um, while it creates, let's create a, a user that we can use to connect to this cluster and edit databases and stuff like that. So here, let's go to security and then go to add new user. Here, I'll give it a username, say, just classed like this. And I'll have it auto-generate a password. Actually, I want to see that password because I'm gonna need it. And let's say add user. Make sure that uh, your user uh, if you want, you can as well customize the role, what uh, what type of permissions they get. Uh, read and write any database is okay for me, but if you want to just lock it down to a specific da database, know that you can do that as well. All right, so one more thing that we need to do is go to IP whitelist. We need to as well give a certain IP address that we allow uh, that IP address to connect to our database. Otherwise, no machine is able to connect to this database. So go to security IP whitelist and go here, add IP um, address. You can add your current machine IP, but uh, I find the problem with this is that sometimes your IP changes and you fail to connect to it and you find yourself coming back to this uh, dashboard and adding a new IP. So as a just because we're in development, I'm gonna click here, allow access from anywhere, which will allow any machine to connect to this uh, cluster. But in production, of course, that's not a good idea. You only want your server to access your database. All right, so our cluster is still being created. So I'll be back once this is done. Okay, so our cluster has now been created. Uh, let's leave it like that for now. Uh, I'm gonna go to the desktop. Let's create our project. I'm just gonna create a folder here. I'll call it merng like this and open it using VS Code. And uh, here, I'll open up the terminal window. Uh, when I create, uh, actually we need to initialize an npm project, so it's to npm init. I'm just gonna do dash y, but you can as well write any details that you want. I'm just gonna give, leave it right like that. I'm gonna create two files. So here I'll create an index.js and I'll create a .get ignore file. 
And uh, by the way, I'm going to initialize a Git repository here. And uh, I'm going to have the, pro the files for this project are going to be in a repository. Depending on whether I've finished the whole project and uploaded it on the GitHub or not, uh, there will be a link in the description which e with each part of the video, each class in its own branch. So for example, this would be class one and it will have the complete code for this uh, class, for this video. All right, so let me close it. Actually, we need to install uh, some dependencies. So here we'll say npm install and we will need Apollo server and GraphQL and Mongoose that we will use to connect to our database. So let's leave that to install. I'll go to the index.js here I'll bring the uh, Apollo server, so I'll say const Apollo server equals require and I'll require Apollo um, server like this, which hasn't been in, uh, installed but that's fine. And uh, here, uh, the thing is we need to have something called type definitions. Um, we'll say const type, usually uh, referred to as type defs like this. And uh, for this, we need uh, something called GQL. We can import that. Let's say const GQL, uh, not from, equals require. And here we'll get it from something called GraphQL tag, which is one of the, the dependencies of Apollo server. So that's installed with Apollo server. Here we'll say GQL um, and do backticks like this, which is a tag template string. And here we will write our types, our GraphQL types. And um, here we will start with type query. And by the way, to get um, to get syntax highlighting inside of these ticks, you need to install something called where is it? It's right here, GraphQL for VS Code. So this will have uh, synta will allow you to have syntax highlighting inside of these backticks for GraphQL. All right. So here we'll have type query. And inside of our types, when we have the type query inside of here, we will have all of our queries, set them up and say what type they return. So one of the queries that we're going to have just to test it out, I'll call this um, say hi, and it will return. So kind of like TypeScript, if you've used, we need to say a return type for this. It will return a string and we can add an exclamation mark to it. That means it's required. It has to return a string or we can leave it like that. It's uh, always better to have the required fields as required. So, you know, you will have more type safety. All right. So here we need as well something else called resolvers. So we'll say const resolvers. And what resolvers do is for each query or mutation or subscription, it has its um, corresponding uh, resolver. So if this query is called say hi, it, it needs a resolver called say hi, which processes some sort of logic and then returns what this query returns. So here uh, we will say query again because we need to group all of, all of our queries inside the query object and all of our mutations inside the mutation object. So here we'll say query and we only have one right now, which is this say hi. So we can say say hi uh, as a function. And here we need to return, uh, we can have as well, uh, we can have it as an arrow function. I think in, for this, it's uh, simple enough to just have it as an arrow function. So here, this will just return, uh, or actually we don't need to the return keyword here. It will just return uh, hello world like this. Now we need to set up our Apollo server. Actually, let me close that here. I'll say const server equals new Apollo server. And this takes two options for now, the type definitions. So you, you see there is an option called type defs. And uh, I can say the type defs is our type defs. But since this is ES6, uh, we don't need to do that. It infers on its own. If the, uh, the key and the value are the same, it will take that. So and we have as well the resolvers, which are called resolvers. So this will do like this. All right. So now that we have our uh, server instance, we can actually start our server. So we can say server dot listen. And uh, we can leave it like that or we can specify a port. I'll specify a port and I'll say uh, 5000 and this returns a promise. So we need to say dot then and we get a result object. And uh, there are a couple of things in this result object, but we're not going to need them. We only need one just um, I'll show you. So I'll say console log once the server starts 
and I'll do backticks and say server running at and then inject a variable here, a template variable, we say result or res dot URL. So this will uh, log it to the console so that we can control click it and open our server. All right, uh, like I told you, just to show you that Apollo server, actually, if you open your node modules and you go down here, you'll see that Express is installed. It's only running an Express server in the back. We're not gonna write any specific Express routes, but just to show you that it's actually using Express uh, in, a, in, a, in the, you know, behind the scenes. All right, so here we can say node, oops, node index to run our index file. And there we go, we get server running at localhost uh, 5000. And if we go to our, um, to our, actually not 8,000, we need to go to 5,000, localhost 5,000. There we go, we get our GraphQL playground. Here we can say query to test out the query that we created. We can do a control space and it will tell us all the queries that we have right now, which are just the say hi right now. And you can also go to the schema and it will tell you what queries and mutations and subscriptions that you have. Obviously we have the, just the one right now. And of course you can go and it will tell you that this um, returns a string and explains what the string is. Of course, you don't need that. <laughs> All right, so here we will can press play and there we go. We get hello world, simple as that. And if we change it, like we can say hello world with a couple of exclamation marks, we save and we stop and run the server again, node index. And we go back and we do control. Uh, by the way, you can do control enter to execute it. And there we go, we get this has changed now. All right, so let's actually connect to our database. For this, we're gonna need mongoose. So here, let's say const mongoose equals require mongoose. So mongoose is the um, ORM library, object relational mapper, which lets us interface with the MongoDB database that we have. So here um, at the bottom, actually we need to connect to the database before we start our server. So let's do here mongoose dot connect. And for us to connect, we need uh, an actual connection string. And we can get that from our uh, MongoDB uh, Atlas uh, dashboard. So here we go to connect. And do I have that password still in the clipboard? I do, cool. Actually, I need that password that I copied from earlier. So I'm just gonna paste it here. And then I'll go back, go to connect again, and go to connect your application and grab this connection string. So click, copy here. And uh, it's better practice that you put these uh, sensitive um, key data in their own file. So here I'll create the file, call it config, uh, not config, or config.js. And here I'll say module.exports equals, and I'll export an ob object. I'll have a key mongodb, and this will hold the connection string. So I'll do a string and paste that. And here, instead of this tag password, uh, I need my actual password. So I'll cut that from there and put it instead of this password. So that's my user, that's the password, that's the cluster, um, the cluster address, so we can connect to it. And I'll go to the get ignore. And of course we need to remove the node modules so that it doesn't track that. And we need to remove as well the config .js so that if we push this code to a GitHub repository or any or Bitbucket or whatever, we don't actually push this because this is sensitive data. All right, so let's save all files. And here in the mongoose connect, we need to bring that uh, MongoDB connection string. So here we'll say const uh, mongo, or actually we need to destructure it, mongodb uh, equals require. So from the same directory, config uh, .js like this. All right, so now that we have that string, Inside of here, we need to say MongoDB like that. And uh, here we need to pass some, uh, an object, some options. We only need this uh, use new URL parser. Otherwise it's gonna give us some deprecation warning if we don't. And this returns a promise. So we need to say dot then, and we don't need the result. There's nothing there. Dot then we actually do this uh, server dot listen. So here we need to say return server.listen like this and port 5000 and then we need to as well chain this dot then to the end of this and then uh, everything will run the same 
but except now uh, it will actually connect to the database. Let's actually as well log something from here to just show that we've connected to the database successfully. So I'll say console.log uh, mongodb connected like this. Let's save, uh, stop this development server and say node index again. All right, so I get an error. Can't find module config.js. Oh, because here it's uh, an actual file and not a uh, dependency. So here I'll say node index again. And there we go, get non uh, MongoDB connected and server running at 5000. Of course, right now we're not doing anything to the database, so we, we are just connected without performing any operations. All right, so what I want to start to do now is to create the database models so that we can use them to interface with the database with. So here I'll create a folder called models and inside of here I'll create the user model, so user with a capital U dot JS and this will hold um, details about the schema. Uh, MongoDB is schema-less but with Mongoose we can specify a schema to have more safety when working with our server code. So here I'll, I'll bring two things from uh, mongoose, so const and destructor model and schema with a capital S like this and say equals require mongoose and here I'll say const user schema equals I'll say new schema and here we'll pass it the fields and our user will have a username which will be unique to each user and here I'll say string. Now we could say on each entry that uh, it's a string and it's required, we could specify it here, but because we're using GraphQL as a middleman, we can use GraphQL itself to say that these fields are required or not. So we will ha handle that on the GraphQL layer and not the mongoose layer. So here we'll have a password for our user. It's gonna be a string as well. We're gonna have a username. Actually, we've had the username. We're gonna have an email, which is gonna be a string, and a created at, which is, I'm gonna store it as a string. You can store it as a date. It doesn't make a difference as long as your code uh, works well with it. So here we'll say module.export, and we need to export uh, our model. So module.exports equals uh, model. We need to call the model, pass it a name. So the name of our model will be user with a capital U, and the schema it uses is gonna be the user schema. All right, so now we're gonna create another model for the post. So we'll say post.js. And here we'll bring the same stuff, the model and the schema. So we can copy that, paste it here. And we'll say const post schema equals new schema. And we'll pass it a couple of things. Uh, each post will have a body, which is gonna be a string. Uh, we'll have a username. So who posted this, which is gonna be a string as well going to be the user's username. It will have a created at, which is going to be a string. Now we can as well specify a default value for the created at here, but we, we will do that on the GraphQL resolvers. Uh, prefer to do that on the GraphQL resolvers. So here uh, each post could have as well an array of comments. Uh, so here we'll say comments and uh, do like this square brackets as an array and here do curly braces to have an object and each uh, comment will have a body. So this will be a string. It will have a username. So who posted this? And this will be a string as well. And a created at a string as well. So after comments, we will have likes. It's gonna be an array. And we could just have usernames, but you could, um, it's better to give them a created at as well so that you can have some, you know, you can have some analytics on your application and know what's going on and when likes are being submitted and all of that good stuff. All right, so I'll give it a create to that, which is gonna be a string. And uh, even though that MongoDB, like I said, is um, um, schema-less and it's a no SQL, so there's, it's not, uh, doesn't have relations, but the ORM itself lets us have relations between our models. Now, we don't have to do this, but you could link uh, your uh, data models. So I could as well say user here and link it to a specific user, this post. And then here we can say type, this is uh, gonna be referred to another uh, schema object. So we'll say schema dot 
uh, types like this dot object uh, id and here we'll say ref and we'll pass it the table or the collection which is users so this allows us to later use Mon uh, mongoose to uh, automatically populate this user field if we want using some mongoose uh, methods all right so here we need to export this we we'll say module dot exports equals model again we give the name of the model which is post and we give the schema which is going to be post schema all right now let's go back to our index let's import our post model so here we'll say const post equals uh, why i'm separating these because it's uh, it's just general convention that you keep your uh, relative imports here and then your dependency imports up here so here i'll say require and go to the models folder models oops models slash post so now that we have the model uh, what I want to do now is want to create a query for fetching all the posts from the database. Um, I'll actually get rid of this say hi and say get posts here. So this get posts will get all the posts from our database and it's going to go to the collection um, posts and bring all the documents from there and return them back to our user. But before that, actually, I want to create a post on our database so that we can fetch because there isn't any right now. So let's go to our cluster. Uh, let's go to collections. So here we have no collection right now. Let's click on add my own data. And let's create a database. I'll just call this mung and uh, collection. We're just going to create the first collection, call it posts. Let's click create. Let's insert a dummy document here. Uh, it's going to give it an automatic ID. Here I'm going to give it a field body. And this will say, this is a sample post and I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it another, another field, click this, uh, add this plus button here. I'll give it a user name and this will say user, click the plus button again and give it a created, oops, created at, I'll just give it some gibberish. It's just a string. After all, we're going to later have um, our code create these instead of just create them manually, of course. Um, actually, I'm just going to leave it like that. Say insert. All right, now that we have our document, let's actually fetch it. Let's go to our code. Here are our get posts. Let um, me close this terminal. Our, our get posts is going to return a type of uh, posts. So it's going to re return an array of posts. So we do these um, square brackets and say post, which is a GraphQL type that we haven't created yet. So let's create that. We'll say our post, so type post, will have a couple of fields. So it'll have an ID, which is going to be of type ID like this. And we put a, an exclamation mark saying that this is required. We need to have it. It will have a body of type string, and it's going to be required. We have a created at. A required string as well. We'll have a username. Oops. Username of type string, and you will have. Actually, I'm just gonna leave. It, um, let's forget about comments and likes for now, and uh, let's keep it like that. And here for our query, so we have get, um, get posts. Let's actually create a resolver for it. I'm gonna get rid of that. Say hi. We don't need that anymore. I'll say get posts and as a function like this. And here we need to use our post model to fetch these posts. So actually I'm gonna use async await um, syntax. So I'll add the keyword async before this uh, function. And here I'll say try, because the thing is, is like maybe your query will never fail, but if you don't do this, if, you, if your query fails, it might stop your actual server, which is not good. So here we'll say const posts. So let's fetch these posts. We'll say await, because this is an async operation. Post our model dot find. And uh, so yeah, this is it. It's dot find. If you don't specify any uh, condition, it's going to find all of them. It's going to fetch all of them. So here we're just going to say return posts. And here we'll say catch. Uh, if we get any error, we'll say throw new um, error and we pass it that error. All right, this should do. Let's save all files, make sure you save all files. And let's stop our server and start it again, say node index.
All right, it runs without any errors and we go to our local host 5000. Uh, you can press this refresh, sometimes you need to refresh it to get the new queries. And here it's, it's having an error because this query doesn't exist anymore. So we can use the other query, which is get posts, and it gives us some intelligence. So we need to open these curly braces and specify which fields we want. So here, if we press control space, it tells us that we can get these fields, which is exactly like the type that we defined. So let's actually get all of these fields. So um, select all of them, body, what else do we have? Created ad and the username. And let's click control enter, and we get an empty array. All right, let's check our code. Hmm, interesting, let's check our database. Oh, okay, I know why. My bad, I forgot something. So let's go to our config. Right here it says test, but this is actually the database name. We need to give the database name. Uh, the DB name is Merng, it's, and it's not test. And by the way, even if you don't have a database on uh, Atlas, and you just give a name here, and you perform um, a persistence, like uh, you create a, um, a document, it's actually gonna create this uh, database if you have the permissions for it. So I'm gonna stop the server and run it again, and this time it should work. All right, let's go and let's run the same query. And there we go. I get the post that we just created and uh, yeah, so the query is working. All right, so this is it for this video. We're now set up and in the next video, we're gonna perform more operations on our database and uh, get the functionality of our application going. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.